Mr. Guard, you have to fly out on, this is like noon. He said, our next flight's at midnight, so you'll have to fly on our next flight at midnight. And I, I said, well, there's a, another carrier, there's a Delta flight leaving in about two hours. Uh, can't you put me on that? And he goes, no, we'd rather that you stayed with us. And I said, well, I would rather your plane uh, worked. <laughs> so I said, under Rule 120.20, can you move me to the next carrier? And his eyes just got wide, and I said, well, under Rule 120.20, if I'm a passenger on a flight that's delayed due to mechanical or crew problem, you're required to move me to the next flight, regardless of the fair basis code. Isn't that correct? And he looks at me and goes, yeah. And I said, so just 12020 me over to that Delta flight, you know. And he, he writes it on, and the guy behind me yells at him, I want that 2020 thing, like that guy. <laughs> we got to know the rules. We have to know how to play the game. Um, I had flown recently, internationally flown into Australia. I won't tell you what airline. I, but I connected to an airline, and I had two giant bags for international travel. But when I connected to the little carrier, they wouldn't let me have two bags. You know what I'm talking about? So the first bag, they said, flies free. That's the rule. First bag flies free. I said, okay. Second bag's going to cost me $400. And I said, uh, that doesn't work for me. That's, that's not good for me. And the guy goes, that's what you have to do. And I said, well, I'm just going to the Gold Coast. And he said, that's it. That's it. Either leave the bag or pay us $400. And I said, what's a one-way ticket cost to Gold Coast? $97 on special. <laughs> I said, sell me one of those. He said, you already have one. Sell me another one. First bag flies free. <laughs> I bought two seats. I saved $300. And I look at my tickets as I'm walking off, and I'm in 14A and 23D. <laughs> Obviously not happy. And, and I said, what, what do I do? And he, and he said, what do you mean? I said, well, can't I sit with myself? And he said, well, maybe someone will move. And I said, you want me to go on that plane and ask if someone will move so I can be together? <laughs> Good point, all right? So use humor first for yourself. Say, for myself. For myself. Say it again. For myself. We have to, we have to insulate ourselves from all this negativity that's out there. These cell phones, PDAs, all this stuff, these are incredible devices, aren't they? But they have made a whole group of incredibly rude people. Don't you agree? They, and I don't even have a problem with these. My biggest problem is with the Bluetooth devices. People are walking around, little things stuck in their ear, talking to themselves. And at the airplanes, at the airports, I don't know who's in a meeting and who's mentally ill. <laughs> right? These are people, that's how I roll. That's what I'm talking about, you know, and <laughs> I was at Chicago O'Hare Airport, and by the way, I don't drag people on stage, so don't worry about that, but I was at Chicago O'Hare Airport, and I found a, a quiet place to sit, and I'm enjoying a new book I like to read when I'm traveling, and I've got a new book, and I'm sitting there reading it, and there's nobody around me, maybe 30 seats around me, nobody around me, and this guy's standing over here, and he's doing this. He's on this, obviously, Bluetooth. Yeah, I don't think we can ship that order by Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we can ship that order by Tuesday. No, no, we're not shipping it. Not by Tuesday. No, I don't think so. It's saying the same. And he, yeah, I don't think we can ship that order by Tuesday. No. And he's walking towards me. I can hear him getting incrementally Doppler effect louder. Yeah, I don't think we can ship that order by Tuesday. And he sits right next to me. <laughs> not two seats over, not literally touching me. Two sh and he, I don't think we can ship that order by Tuesday. And I've had enough. And I said, I need that order by Tuesday. <laughs> you told me you'd ship that order by Tuesday. You better ship that order by Tuesday. <laughs> and he looks over and he goes, sir, I'm not talking to you. Well, the guy on the cell phone thinks he's talking to him. And, and he goes, no, I'm talking to you. I said, I'm talking to you. You better ship that order by Tuesday. <laughs> And he starts picking his stuff up, and I'm going, don't you walk away from me. I will find you if that order's not shipped. And, and I changed seats before the police came. But, but we just have to find ways of dealing with it. And to me, sometimes you just do it in your mind, but you do it first for yourself. The last part is share it. Say it. Share it. We share the humor. I have the most fun sharing humor when I'm traveling. Do we make mistakes? Yes. I was in Rome. I've been waiting my whole life to go to Rome. I mean, I, I've been waiting to go to Sydney. Had fun here, too. But it, 
But I'm in Rome, and I've been waiting my whole life to use this one little line that I've been saving. Something is a humorous I've always wanted to say. And I, the lady that hired me, she said, Mr. Guard, we had a great program. We'd like to take you out to dinner. Where would you like to go? Went in Rome. <laughs> and she went, yeah. <laughs> and I realized, they don't say that there. That's, <laughs> that's the one place you can't use that line. <laughs> Humor will translate. The laughter works as long as we assume the best. We don't want to laugh at people, we want to just be able to have fun. And this sharing of humor, we'll, we'll spend more time with that today, we'll have fun. Here's an example of it. That's not how they spell humor here, so I corrected it just on my slide. So for those of you from Australia, you know I did the right thing. Now I have freebies. Do you like freebies? Yeah. If you talk to me today, you will get free... <laughs> Work with me, people. I write this stuff. Now, some of you are saying this is pretty corny, but let me tell you something. I carry these with me wherever I go, these little foam letter Bs. When I check into a hotel, I want an upgrade to a suite for free. Why? Why not? <laughs> if they have them, why not put me in a suite? And instead of just coming up and going, put me in a suite, put me in a suite, until they do it, which I've tried, Actually, I had one of them, I told them I was going to hold my breath till they put me in a suite, you know. And <laughs> These work better. I'll come up to a person at the front desk and I'll say, do you have any freebies today? And they'll go, no. And I'll go, then these are for you. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm in a suite. Woohoo! So this, we have freebies. I also have, this is my official policy manual. If you travel like I do, people tell you all the, do, all the time they can't do something because it's their what? Their policy. You know, I tell people in my own business, here's what I can do, here's what I can't do. But don't hide behind this term. So ladies, you'll be happy to know that my policy manual actually has a sticker you can put over it that says it's good to be queen. But you can show them that, and then on the back of the policy manual, there's your picture. You can put your own picture up there. So you can show them that it's my policies, okay? I, uh, I, bu I just put mine up there. And... <laughs> All right, this is my Comic Visions coloring book. I've discovered during boarding of the airplane when I'm traveling, if I'm coloring, people will leave me alone. <laughs> and if I'm coloring pictures of myself, <laughs> that even works better, all right? So, so here's the thing, just like anything can be learn, something you learn. Humor can be learned. It's something we learn to do, and I'll give you some tips on it here today. Read that out loud right now. Read it out loud. The more you read that, what happens? The easier it becomes. When you tell yourself, I'm angry, I'm stressed, I can't deal with this, your brain believes it. Now, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying, I mean, if you're, if you're really ill and you're going, I'm, not, I'm tired. No, you're not. Yes, you are. Then seek professional care. That's not what I mean. <laughs> but we can do this. This is what I'm talking about. These are... <laughs> this is not a good marketing use, in my opinion. Okay? And sometimes we're too close to it. I'm from Helena, Montana. This is the name of the hospital in Helena. Who names a hospital after the saint that guards the pearly gates? I mean, what message are you sending to your patients? I'm standing out front here. They're bringing a guy in on a gurney, and he's going, where am I? And I'm going, don't tell him. <laughs> hey, buddy, stay out of the light, you know. This was the swine flu best advice that was given in 1918. This is what they told people, travelers like us. Wash inside of the nose with soap and water each night and morning. Force yourself to sneeze night and morning, then breathe deeply. Do not wear a muffler. Take sharp walks and walk home from work. That would take you a long time from here, wouldn't it? Eat plenty of porridge. That may help you with your cholesterol level. Is it going to stop you from getting swine flu H1N1? No. Same thing now. We've, they've, all this information came out, and as a traveler, I had to learn to act and not react. 
I'm sitting next to this guy in the plane. He's washing his hands with Purell every few seconds. Four-hour flight. He just keeps washing his hands. And finally, he looks at me and he goes, do you want some? And I said, no, no, I don't. And he said, well, aren't you worried about swine flu? And I said, no. I said, do you have it? <laughs> and he goes, no. He said, this stuff is the only thing keeping me from getting swine flu. And I said, that Purell? And he goes, yeah. And I said, you know that's antibacterial lotion, right? And he goes, yeah. You know H1N1's a virus, right? It's not going to help you. <laughs> and he gets up and moves to another seat, you know. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Mission accomplished, all right? So we have fun. Say it. Have fun. Luggage is probably one of the things that people have the least amount of fun with. With me, I have the most. This is my carry on bag. A lot of you have black roller bags. Mine is the only one that has orange chicken feet sticking out of it. When it's in the overhead, nobody messes with my bag. Nobody asks me if they can move my bag. And I love it when they do this. They'll say, sir, may I look in your bag? Now, what are your options? Oh, don't look in there. <laughs> Scary things, you know. But this young man, this is again in Denver, opens up my bag, he takes a rubber chicken out, and he's not even surprised it's a whole rubber chicken. You know, he... And he begins to frisk it. <laughs> and I was doing good. I was biting my lip, but I was doing good. And he flips it over, gives a little honk right here, you know. And I've got tears coming down my face. And he, and he goes, it's clear. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. I don't even know what the proper response is to that. But this is my carry-on bag. This is my check bag. I had another passenger take my bag by mistake one time. It will never happen again. <laughs> I had this sign put on, this is not your bag. Many bags look alike, this isn't your bag because this bag belongs to Tim Gard. Does this work every time? No. I had a guy in Phoenix read the sign, grabbed the handle, pulled it off the turnstile, and I said, come on. And he said, that looks just like my bag except for the sign. <laughs> so I came up with a new one. There's a couple new ones. Does this bag make my butt look big? They still aren't 100% though. All right, so do it first for yourself. Say, for myself. For myself. This is one of my favorite Tim 